dollars, dollars in October. Because they're sending things out, they're buying their media earlier. You can't buy a, total, a full media schedule in October. So if you're thinking about contributing, now is the time. So that's it. If you have any questions, please ask me your questions. This is my information here. You can reach me at uh, conservativestrategy.com. It's Kirschbaum. And uh, before the further questions, why don't you go up to the microphone? Yes. Okay, anyone who has a question, please come over and uh, we can raise that question. We can start uh, with Renee Garrett. Renee, you're not going to give us a speech now, are you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no speeches. Oh, I'm sorry. That you, you said that, that we should. You said that we should focus on candidates that are going to win, that we consider winners. That have winnable campaigns. Okay. Now, are those candidates going to be falling from the sky like mana? Or should we conservatives start grooming them, uh, grooming them start the, you know, uh, scouting for them way before the primaries? Two ways to do it. First of all, we have candidates now that, we're, that we need to support. But yes. I think conservatives should go out and start looking for candidates that they want to support. Actually, what people don't realize, people don't realize is that running for office, you can, it's, there's actually a career path. So if you get good people and you want them in office, they may start at a city council position and work their way up into assembly and, and other things, but there's a number of places you can find them. A lot of business groups is a good place to look for them. Okay. All right, uh, Bob Nystrom, again, no speeches, Bob? So I'm definitely a fan of uh, Trevor Reese's book, Positioning the Battle for the Mind. And one of the things that I've noticed is that the vocabulary that's being used is the exact same vocabulary that the left and the liberals have been defining and indoctrinating people into. So essentially, what we're in a position of doing is we're doing this frontal assault on their strongest points directly into their defenses of a lot of stuff. I find by just tweaking the vocabulary, we can make a lot of difference. And I'd like to see if, if, if you have some ideas as to how we can change the messages. I don't call myself a conservative or a Republican. I call myself a founding liberal. It opens up a whole conversation. Right. Liberals have absolutely no comeback for it. I call myself a de-activist instead of an activist. Yeah. Stuff like that. And it, it really opens up a conversation. Yeah. I focus on corruption instead of trying to get the government to force policies upon people. Sure. And it, it unites both sides. Right. I'll give you a minute like that. Yeah, but I'm not going to do that until after this election cycle, because I want to. But you're, you're right. It's, a, it's all about reframing. As I mentioned earlier, they spent a massive amount of money trying to figure out what, basically, what independents will buy. It's basically their issues reframed in a way that they can sell them to independents and not change their positions, but what they spend their entire time trying to come up with ways to deflect. You know what swap theory is? Strength, weakness, opportunities, threats. What they want to do is neutralize conservative issues. So they come up with issues that are very close but different, and that's how they go about doing it. Okay, our, our next speaker is Don Wolf. He's a former mayor of uh, Saratoga. Mr. Wolf. Yeah, thanks. I've got a, an important correction one of the statements that you made. The expert candidate for the County Board of Supervisors, Mike Wasserman, is leading by 16 points. He's ahead by 16 yeah, points. Yeah, and he's going to make an excellent member of oh, the County Board of Supervisors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, Ryan, come, come up here and make your statement. Is that a question? You sort of mentioned a little bit. How can we do a better job bringing in black voters, Latino voters, and young voters into our side. Because we haven't really been doing a good job, like in the inner cities, we don't do a good job there. You have to talk to them. You have to ask them what they want from us, or how we can help them. I mean, it's, it's all dialogue. It's all finding out what people need. It's about them, remember? It's not about us. And so you, that's where coalition building comes in. You find people in those communities and have them introduce you to those communities so you can sit down and have dialogue. 
Because they'll tell everybody will tell you what their problems are. Everybody will tell you what their hopes are for their friends and their families and their communities. You just have to find a way in to go talk to them. That's uh, Dwight Christensen. Dwight. Yes, uh, I'm interested in getting the uh, vote turned around to more conservative area too, um, and I liked your analysis on how we can get that happening. But uh, one of my major concerns about the Republican Party is that the, we haven't been that fiscally responsible and um, haven't held to some of the doctrine of the Constitution. So uh, what I'm looking for is something that we can do to vet the candidates that are running for office and how to get them to um, promote themselves in, in a way that they can advertise themselves as being fiscally responsible. And so I know that there's uh, some things going on like that, like the, the money seminars that Kirk McKenzie is doing, but I'm wondering if there are other avenues along those same lines. Well, as far as the parties are concerned, people like yourself need to actually get involved with the parties. If you can run for one of their offices, that would be great, because that's something you can change from within. I mean, that's, that's, and every political party and every county party, every state party has some forms of elections to hire party apparatchik, if you want to call them that. You need to get involved in that. Secondly, after this election, there's nothing wrong with education, but you can't educate during the political season. It's too costly. So you might want to come up with a mechanism by which you can do that, and then find candidates that basically subscribe to you know their thoughts are like your thoughts. And places you can find those candidates is and organizations. You look for leadership. And there's a number of different places you can find leaders. Then you just have to approach them. A lot of people have never been asked. Probably the best of us that have never, never been asked to run for office. Because they have a big question. Can I afford it? Can I take the time? You know, what's it going to do to my family? So if you are if you ask them to run for office, you have a responsibility. It's not like you save a life you have to you know, be responsible for. It. If you ask them to run for office, you're responsible for it. You have to keep that in mind, or don't ask, because it's a huge, huge decision. Another important question. Yes, ma'am. Hi. I have a couple of questions, really. In uh, the early 2000s, when Bush was running, I did all telephone calls for my neighborhood, and the Republican group had a wonderful list where they identified the political party of the person to whom I would make a call. When Poisoner was running and I was trying to get this, I was unable to get the identification, so I lost a lot of time because people were rude or hang up and say, I'm a Democrat. So I wonder if this would be available where you can identify the political, the political side. The second thing is, I also found by trying to get this of my neighborhood, I would introduce myself as, I'm one of your neighbors. And the attitude of the person talking to you is tremendously different. They're open and they are, they are less likely to be open. They will not hang up on you. Right. Basically, it's a call in the list. There's several places you can get lists. I've seen Curtis's lists for Blakesley. They're very good. What he's done is he's, he's basically taken all the Republicans and independents. Now, you're going to bump into a, uh, a liberal independent. That's just life when you make phone calls. But if you have a quality list, you, your life is considerably easier. Yes. And now with the telephone automation, and VoIP phones and things like that, you push a button, you don't even have to leave a message. You just hang up the phone and make the next call. So it's it's much more efficient. The lists are very good if the people spend the money to get good lists. And you shouldn't be running into those problems. So one goes to the candidate to get the list? No, the candidate will have a list, correct. That's not something you as an individual can probably pick up. Mark, thank you. And the Honorable Ray Strong. Yes, sir. I have a question about uh, one of the first trends that you talked about, the fall off in the off-year elections. And I looked at that, and I have my own experience and memory. I don't have statistics, but I'd like to ask what you think of my impression that one of the reasons for the big fall off in 2006 was a lot of Republicans.